All right, so I have uh, deleted layers I don't think I needed. And now as kind of a finishing technique, I've built everything I think I need, but now I just want to play with everything a little bit. So I've got these separate layers. I'll show you them from the bottom up so you can kind of see the process. So I have that sketch layer. I did refine paint on top of that. I then merged the layers and then played with the color and dodging and burning and stretched it a little bit. I then put more refined paint on top of that, which in some ways, I mean, it adds a lot of texture and interest, but it also kind of took the, the overall sh lights and shadows and made kind of mushed them all together again. And then I composited some glasses on top and then rotoscoped over them so that they'd match the painting style. So now what I'm left with is thinking, okay, how can all of this be made better? And so an easy thing is I can select them all, kind of center it onto my canvas. Let me plug in my external mic. All right, hopefully you can hear me now. Yes, sir. Great. So by putting in a white background, I can see all of these extra smudges that, you know, the gray background was hiding. And so now I have to do kind of the, the burdensome work of figuring out what layers those are on. And an easy way to do that, honestly, is to just take your lasso and make kind of an arbitrary cut. This will be a little sharp, but then I can always paint again to address it. And then I'm just going to delete it from those different layers. So that selection will travel between, you know, down through my layers. And actually on this last one, I can just use that selection and I can just move it. So I can just move those, whoops, move those paint marks. So I can keep a little bit of that softness. From the edge. Now I like my digital paintings to be an accumulation of all those different layers, but it can be interesting to see what it looks like with certain layers turned off. Right. So without the sketch layer, it's just a little bit more open on the sides. Same thing with that. And then without the merged paint layer and you just have the more refined paint, you see how that's actually not doing all that much. But man, does it make a difference on top of my other paint layers. So this is kind of my favorite finishing technique that's unique to digital, is I can treat each of these layers a little differently. So if I notice that between, ah, I wish the eyeballs would react quicker. Come on. So if I notice that between the merged paint layer and the more refined paint layer, that things start to get kind of smudged out and not as clear, then I can just go on the more refined paint layer and I can try an adjustment. So we can try a levels adjustment and I can just deepen the shadows just on the refined paint a little bit.
and maybe up the highlights. Or maybe not. You know, so it looks like I actually just need to deepen some of the midtones. I can also do some pretty bold things with color if I want to. So remember, all of these different paint layers were basically using the same palette. But if I want to, I can take one of those paint layers and shift the hue. Because it might give me some interesting results, right? Like pushing it a little bit more purple. Pushing it more towards the reds. I'm not saying I, I'm going to do something too extreme, but it's it's always good to see your options. And I think I like kind of pushing it that way a little bit. Maybe taking down the lightness a little. And then just knock off the saturation a tiny bit. So with those two, that really changed it from being kind of smudgy to being more defined without having to put down a single brush stroke, but just getting more variety between my different paint layers. My glasses, which came in as just a black and white element, I can take that and just really push the saturation up. See what that does. You know, it makes the red stronger, the blue stronger. I can also play with shifting the hue a little bit. I don't think in an extreme way. And then if I notice like the tip of the nose there, that's a little weird. So then I can go and I can say, on the merge paint layer, just this area, just lasso it, I'm just gonna adjust those colors separately. Hue saturation is your strongest color variety tool. See if you like it. I think I was maybe a little extreme, but I kind of like it. Maybe I'll go into color balance, try to get a little bit more of a difference between the highlights and the shadows. There we go. Yeah. And there are just endless games you can play with it. And then of course, this is digital painting, so you can always paint some more and transition some more. And I'm doing at a pretty low opacity. I want some of these browns now that weren't ever really part of my palette to come into it. Because painting is not like photography. I'm not looking even at my reference anymore. I'm trying to figure out the painting for myself, figure out what it needs, figure out which edges need to be softened, which textures needs, need to be brought out. And this could go on for a lot longer than the time we have, you know, refining it and revisiting it. Looking at those edges, trying to build the edge you want. Because I cut out these edges with a lasso, 
it's just like with the glasses I want to paint over them and give them that slight handmade touch so they don't look they don't draw attention away from the other work I've done and notice as I'm finishing I'm viewing it all at once I'm not doing any zooming in unless there's some detail work I need to to fix So it's funny, the thing that I kind of did very quickly and have just left are the teeth. So if there's anything you've just been kind of ignoring, you can hit those a little bit, but don't overdo it, right? You don't want to finish off one thing more than any other. Strengthen the highlight in the eye. Computer's slowing down quite a bit. Get some of that blue back in there. Lost along the way. Some of these other colors in there. Personally, I think you can always push color a little bit more than you're comfortable with. It's really the, the values, the lights and darks that tell us what we're looking at, not so much the color. So you can have a little bit more fun with the color and still have it represent clearly. Okay, so what what is left to do? Well, just like with our spot illustrations and our logos, I can work from behind it. So once I get like all these little things cleaned up, get the edges sharpened, I can even do some internal compositing, right? I can take a lasso edge like this, duplicate it, from one layer, move that paint around. You know, to give me a little bit more of a whoops, give me a little bit more of a jaw. Control T, not Command T. On that side, because that jaw was a little weakly painted. And then just like compositing, even though I'm compositing with my own brush strokes here, I just erase away from the edges. So it sinks in. So all the little considerations we've done on past projects apply here. Okay, then once I'm kind of happy with what I've done, I'm going to go to the very top layer and I'm going to merge them all into one. So the only one I don't want to merge it in, I don't want to merge the backgrounds in. So turn those off. I'm going to go to Layer, hold down Option, and say Merge Down. That did not quite work. Let's see. I'll label that merged. 